How's it going everyone? Historical Military here and today I wanted to talk about the First World War German gas mask known as the Leda Schütze Maske officially or the Leda Maske or if you wanted to get really abbreviated just the GM-17 um, along with this canister and its Stahlhelm which I won't go into today. Um, I wanted to talk about its history and how the Germans came to use one and then I did want to bring it up close and to show it off and to show off the pieces and the parts that brought it together. Getting into it, um, in the First World War, of course, everybody knows chemical warfare did happen. Um, in the first, in 1914, the first gas attack ever done was by the French, actually. Um, they used tear gas against the Germans in such a little amount that the Germans didn't even pick it up. It didn't affect them whatsoever. Yet yeah, later on in the war, especially in 1915, around Ypres, the Germans used chlorine gas against the British, which had a devastating effect on them. And eventually everybody sought to make a gas mask to prevent what was going on. Um, you have the British small box respirators. I'll insert a picture in there. And the first German gas mask was the Gumi Maska developed in 1915. It was a rubberized type of fabric material around two eyelets with the gas mask canister, much like one of these right here that would connect to it. Um, those were good. There were many variations of those going up until 1917. And then eventually Germany realized that it was about to run out of rubber. Its shortages were great due to the British blockade and they needed to look elsewhere for a gas mask. And doing so, they came up with this, the Lederschütze Maske in 1917. These were made out of leather, uh, specifically from animals that panted, not sweated for heat relief due to the pores. They didn't want to have pores that would allow for the poisonous gas to get through. And they used chrome tanned leather like I mentioned before, that was dipped in oil to help out with the gas repelling properties. They used the same filters as the Gumi Maska, interchangeable, you can swap them out. They had these eyepieces that they're exactly the same, except for the, they called them spider eyelets, as you can see the pieces of metal on there. I can show up, uh, up close later on in the video. These were protective to help them out, to not damage the celluloid and Zellon uh, eyelets inside. These worked pretty well. Um, the canisters were made out of charcoal and pumice. Actually, right before this mask came out, they developed a new mask that had more charcoal in it and less pumice that made it essentially better. Now, to hold these masks, they would have a canister like one of these. I wanna say this is actually an M16 canister um, due to it being a little shorter. The M17 canisters would be about, uh, about a, I don't know, inch or two taller and they wouldn't have this raised lip on it. So I believe this was originally for a Gumi Maska yet I got it with this Lita Schutze Maska right here. So um, yeah, that's how it is. This one's actually named I don't know if you guys can see that right there. And this is how they would look inside. They would have a black shellac inside of it just to help them out. And this is actually a, a extra eyelet canister right here. Little compartment. And I could show these off. I don't know if they'll... Oh, there you go. I don't speak German. So, um, yeah, something about that. I can't really read them. And inside are extra eye pieces. Again, they have markings on it, which I uh, don't really know what those mean, honestly. <laughs> I'll never know. And these are celluloid. These are made out of celluloid. Celluloid and celluloid. With, I believe, um, something else was in there too, but mainly celluloid. And as you know, celluloid does get yellow with age. That's why most of these are yellowed. So these are going up top. And they would store right in there. 
and this is how it is. Now I am missing a piece of paper that shows the instructions on how to use it and everything that would go in here, but I don't have one. And these right here are actually straps that you put on and then that goes around your waist, or not your waist, um, just your body so you can have it hang on your side and just to pop it out whenever you need it. Now going into the actual mask, This is the Lida Schütze Maske. Now, as you can see, they have the spider eyelets, which are the pieces of metal. This is leather. This is kind of dirty, but it has a brownish blackish. Depends on how you, some of them are a little different color. Um, dipped in oil, just to kind of make it a little better. And metal rimmed. Now these bands are also taken from the Gumi Masca, the light versions. These are elastic that allow it to go around someone's head easier. And then cloth. This one has a weird stain on it. And inside, this one's kind of dirty and stuff. But you see those eyelets right there more. Um, kind of oiled, rubberized a little bit. Um, inside you have the you have the, the canister, the actual filter, which I'll get into in a little bit, down in there. This cord goes around your neck to help you out. Just in case it's kind of ripped, I don't want to damage it at all. We'll put it back in there. Yeah, and so this would go on. I have one right there to display. Um, now getting into the filter, it would just go off right like that. Very nice. This one's actually named to this man. Don't really know his name. Um, hopefully he's not lost to history. I'll figure it out. Hunt him down somewhere. Hook him up. This is the canister. Same as the actual Gumi mask of before. They were just same uh, threads and everything. You can interchange them. As you can see in there, maker's mark. Let's see, another little maker's mark. And the date, 11, 12, 17. So November 12th, 1917. And the 11C11 11, uh, stands for the new filters. The original ones had a little less charcoal and a little more pumice. These are, like I said earlier, more charcoal as pumice, which essentially made them better. And then these are just screw right on. Just like that, swap them out, and there you go. You could talk and stuff in it. Very nice. If we set that down a little bit, now we go over to this one. This, that cord right there is supposed to be on every mask. That helps them to support it. I don't really want to take the helmet off because it'll make it fall. But that kind of helps it support the mask and everything. This one. Same canister. Now this actually has a, I think it's a smoke filter. I believe it's called that. It helps kind of keep everything kind of garbage out of it and stuff like that to make it nice and clean. I don't believe this one is ever, it's all white inside, so it was mainly never used. Um, this one was dated June 28th, 1918. Again, 11C11, which represents the new mask, the new uh, mask filters. And yeah, like I said earlier, you could just slap them on like that and you're good to go right into the battle. Now how these would go is for storing, you know, they fold up real nice. Pop them in like that. fell. Um, pop them in like that. Now this canister is a little smaller than the actual canister for this mask. So it's kind of a tight fit yet it still works. Pop it like that. Alright and you're good to go.
whole thing fits in here. You can pop it on your side. Very nice. You're good to go. These were the standard issue um, German gas masks of the First World War after 1917. Of course, before they had the Gumi mask, uh, you know, there are many versions of that. They were used greatly. They were pretty good. Um, they helped out a lot. Of course, now comparing them to the British and American SBRs, small box respirators, I don't know if they were actually better in terms of certain aspects. They were better. You could talk in these compared to the American and British ones. You cannot. But in terms of the filter quality, I don't know if they were physically better at stopping certain poisonous gases than compared to the English corrected gas mask of the American ones. Um, by the way, put a little comment if you want me to do a video about those. Um, but yeah. Simple little mask. Pop it right out. Good to go. Slap it on. Of course, I don't want to put this on. Don't want to damage it. Um, yeah. Let's see if I can get a view of how it looks through it. They're a little dirty, but kind of sucks. <laughs> Can't really see anything through it. So yeah, that's how it is. That's how they looked. Another little size three. That's the size that I don't know what that is. It might be another little maker mark thing. Um, but yeah, guys. There's a little video on the GM 17 or the Lederschütze Maske of the German gas masks in World War One. So um, comment down below if you like this video, if I missed anything. Um, yeah, thanks.